Hey guys, it's Kate420, and I hope everyone had a great 420. I'm back with a video that I've been working on for a little time now. And it's perfect timing because this name has popped back up in the news recently, and I can only hope that this time his victims get the justice they so greatly deserve. So, without further ado, guys, let me uh, get to business. Jeffrey Edward Epstein was born in Brooklyn, New York, January 20th, 1953. He's a financier, a science and research philanthropist, and a registered sex offender. He once worked for Bear Stearns before forming his own firm, J. Epstein and Company. In March of 2005, a 14-year-old girl told her parents and her parents report that Jeffrey Epstein molested her at a mansion in Palm Beach. A classmate from Royal Palm Beach High School had taken her to the house to give him a massage for $200. In April, Palm Beach police began to begin trash pulls at Epstein's home, discovering a telephone message for Epstein with the girl's name on it in a time that matched the time she had told police she was there. Also found were names and phone numbers of the other girls on message slips in the trash. A police probe, a police probe was in full effect by October of 2005. Investigators begin interviewing girls. As one is being interviewed, she receives a call from Epstein's assistant. Epstein's butlers are also questioned. They report Epstein's getting frequent visits from girls throughout the day. And on October 20th, police execute a search warrant on Epstein's home on Albrillo Way in Palm Beach. By May 2006, police signed a probable cause affidavit charging Epstein and two of his co-assistants, excuse me, two of his assistants with multiple counts of unlawful sex acts with minors. Palm Beach State Attorney Barry Krishner instead refers the case to a grand jury. Police were unhappy with Krishner's handling of the case. The grand jury met in June of 2006. And after speaking to only one girl, returns an indictment of one count of solicitation of prostitution. The charge does not reflect that of the victim in question, and many others were minors. By July, Epstein's powerhouse legal, excuse me, by July 2006, Epstein's powerhouse legal team tries to negotiate a deal with state attorney's office. At a time, this was Alex Acosta, current labor secretary for the Trump administration. Lawyers discussed a deferred prosecution in which Epstein would enter a pretrial intervention program and serve no jail time. That same month, after pressure from police chief, the FBI opens an investigation called Operation Leap Year. Documents list the possible crime as child prostitution. By November, the FBI was interviewing victims, wit victims, witnesses from Florida, New York, and New Mexico. The U.S. Attorney's Office prepared to present the case to a federal grand jury. Epstein's attorneys request a meeting to discuss the investigation, May of 2007. By June, however, a 53-page indictment is prepared by a U.S. Attorney's Office by the U.S. Attorney's Office at the very same time as plea negotiations are initiated by Epstein's legal team. The grand jury subpoenas are issued for Epstein's computers, which apparently have been removed from his Palm Beach home prior to the search in July. In August. U.S. Attorney for Florida, Alex Acosta, enters into a direct discussions about the plea agreements. A motion to compel 
the production of Epstein's computers is delayed. September, federal prosecutors draw up several plea agreements that are all rejected by Epstein and his lawyers. Epstein signs a non-prosecution agreement on September 24th, but his attorneys continue to delay his court appearance. The non-prosecution agreement was still being debated. Acosta meets with Epstein lawyer Jay Lefkowitz at a West Palm Beach Marriott on Okeechobee Road to discuss finalizing the deal. Among the terms agreed upon, the victims would not be notified. Then the deal would be kept under seal. All grand jury subpoenas would be canceled. However, Epstein's powerhouse legal team still objects to an addendum to the agreement. The provision called for a special master to appoint an attorney to represent Epstein vic Epstein's victims' legal rights to civil compensation. The two sides debated the addendum into December of 2007. Epstein attorney Kenneth Starr asked for a review of the agreement by the U.S. Department of Justice in Washington, further delaying its execution. The victims are told the investigation is continuing. January 2008. Epstein attorney Lafkowitz calls Acosta, telling him Epstein will not go through with the agreement that re because it requires him to register as a sex offender. With the plea negotiations and the DOJ review still in limbo, the FBI continues its probe, locating more witnesses and more evidence. In March, preparations are made for a new federal grand jury presentation. In court documents, the U.S. Attorney's Office notes that Epstein victims are being harassed by his lawyers, who aren't named specifically. However, articles say, or articles report that this was Alan Dershowitz. By May of 2008, the Justice Department issues its, its findings that if a plea deal is not reached, Epstein can and will be federally prosecuted. So in June, Epstein lawyers revisit the plea negotiations, and on June 30th, Epstein appears in Palm Beach in a Palm Beach County courtroom. He pleads guilty to state charges, a single count of solicitation of prostitution, a single count of solicitation of prostitution in a minor under the age of 18. He is sentenced to 18 months in jail, followed by a year of community control it, or house arrest, sorry. And, is a, and he is adjudicated as a convicted sex offender who in Florida must register two times a year. We're going to come back to this, guys. I want to take a little brief second and introduce you to some of Jeffrey Epstein's victims.
Alright, um, real quick, I'm going to go back to the finishing where I was at, and then we're going to visit where the case is at today. So, in July, I've seen victims are finally told about his plea agreement, of course, after the fact. They file an emergency petition to force federal prosecutors to comply with the Federal Crime Victims' Rights Act, which mandates certain rights for crime victims, including the right to be informed about plea agreements and the right to appear at sentencing. In August, Epstein's victims learn he's been sent to jail and that, federal, that the federal investigation is over. They seek to have his plea agreement unsealed, but federal prosecutors argue against that agreement commencing a year-long court battle to learn the terms of Epstein's plea agreement. By October, Epstein starts work release. From a private wing at the county jail, he is picked up by his private driver six days a week and taken to an office in West Palm Beach, where he's allowed to accept visitors up to 12 hours a day, three to the jail in the evenings to sleep. In July, Epstein is released from the Palm Beach County Jail five months early. He, is, he must register as a sex offender, is on probation for a year, confined to his Palm Beach County home for a year, except to travel to his office in West Palm Beach. However, records show he frequently makes trips to Manhattan and his home in the U.S. Virgin Islands. Also, um, during this time, he... It was said that um, they it, it was discovered that the registration of his you know him being a sex offender it was perp he purposely pleaded guilty they set it up for him to plead guilty to um, solicitation of prostitution and, and instead of making the girl fourteen which she was. They made the girl 16, and in making the girl 16, that saves Epstein from having to register as a sex offender in a total of 23 states in the United States alone, Not left alone many of the other countries that he visits and owns houses in. Um, in 2009, Palm Beach Captain George Frick finds Epstein walking along um, Highway A1A in the middle of the afternoon, where he's supposed to be at work in his office in the downtown West Palm Beach. Epstein says he's walking to work, even though the location where he is found is not in direct route to his office. His probation officer says, however, that Epstein has the right to some exercise. The non-prosecution agreement was finally made public in September of 2009 as well as a dozen civil lawsuits having been filed by women who allege they were molested by Epstein when they were underage. Epstein, however, begins the process of settling lawsuits. In November one of, Epstein's, of 2009, one of Epstein's butlers tries to sell an undercover FBI agent a black book filled with names hundreds of girls and women have seen allegedly procured for the sex and massages. That butler tells FBI agents he witnessed nude underage girls in Epstein's pool and had known that the millionaire was having sex with them. He also says he saw pornography underage girls on Epstein's, pornographic underage pictures of girls on Epstein's computers. The butler of which, by the way, might explain why the computers weren't there when the raid happened. The butler, Alfredo Rodriguez, in later, is later charged with obstruction of justice and sentenced to federal prison. He dies in 2015, and the contents of the Black Book become part of several lawsuits. I want everyone to hear this. The butler who, turn, who, who tried to sell this 
black book to an undercover FBI agent. I'm going to show you the black book in a second. Has spent more time in jail than this billionaire scumbag who molested and raped teenage hundreds, if not thousands. When by the time I'm done with this, showing you this, teenage girls all over the world, not just the United States, internationally. So, we're going to take a quick look at Jeffrey Epstein's Little Black Book. And I'm going to show you some of the little highlights of it. All right. Um, the numbers are obviously black, uh, rejected guys, but some of the world's most prominent, um, people are in this book. Some he had connections that would just make the average person ch chilled. Um, and the weird thing is, is that no one was able to, to ask the butler because he died in prison, Alfredo Rodriguez, um, what the circles like the, what the names that he circled in here Matt of course people have uh have made all kinds of uh, 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 assumptions of what they meant um what it means and I can tell you what a couple of them what I think they mean so uh let me look at some of these names guys you've got uh Mike Bloomberg millionaire Mike Bloomberg in New York City you know wannabe president but never will be um you've got names like uh well, wait till we get down there. I want to. Richard Branson owns, uh, you know, Virgin Mobile. <laughs> He's a billionaire. Um, keep going here now. This Jean Luc Bernal. He owns a model, uh, a model company, a modeling agency. And a lot of these girls' stories, if you read through the transcripts, um, when they were, you know, um, brought to Epstein, a lot of the conversations he would find, he, he would find out, you know, like their hopes and their dreams or whatever. And, and he would use that. He would say, you know, I have connections. I, I can get into the modeling business. You just have to, you know, play the play ball right and, and do as I tell you to do. And then when all is done, you'll have a modeling career. Uh, Jean, Brunel, Jean Luc Brunel was also accused of uh, having underage sex with girls. Not, uh, I don't believe is part, maybe part of this case, but um, one of the lawsuits for sure. Uh, okay, um, I'm pretty sure it was the lawsuit, guys. But I'm not going to go through all of these because there's more down here. I want to get to the more important things of the massages because in this black book, under different part, different countries all over the, you know, all over the world, he has his. Hang on, first of all, real quick. He has massage. He has lists for girls for massages everywhere, and I'm going to show that to you. But here, real quick, Buckingham Palace, London. Buck I mean, this this guy's not playing. He, Duchess of York, Duke of York. So we're aware the Duke of York, Andrew, Prince Andrew, is one of the men in question that is a part of Virginia Roberts' lawsuit uh, against uh, against. Epstein, I believe in the, I'm not sure she's filing it, just Epstein in the state or what, but anyway, um, we'll go through that in a minute. I've got the lawsuits to deal with after this part, but the Duke of York is part of that. She said she was forced to sleep with him. Uh, the palace responded by saying that um, he had never seen her, and uh, I think we're going to take care of that that whole, uh, or he's never met her, doesn't know, you know, it must be a big mistake, you know, never, never even met the young lady in question. So we're going to take care of that whole uh, lie here in a minute, debunk that. Um, no, I don't remember if it was, I don't think it's under M. I think I've done this before. I, I don't think it's under M. I think it's under something else. It, let me just get to it here. I don't want to go too fast because I don't want to miss it. But, I think it's in the end, like, okay, because it goes by, if you notice, it's going to start over again here in a minute. Hold on. Go to, go back. Did it start over yet? G, 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 G. Okay, so, so we're still in one country. 
oh yeah, there's different countries, and you know, because the alphabet starts over again. Courtney Love, we all know, uh, her ex Kurt Cobain had, you know, headed Nirvana, he's no longer with us. She was said to have also traveled to Orgyland multiple times. Um, let's see, anybody in here? Let's see, as we start to get to the M's, uh, that's where I look for the massages because I know they're marked in different countries. But I do believe it's under the services. Uh, you're going to find that the Maxwells are a big, huge part of this. Ghislaine Maxwell is uh, Jeffrey's partner in crime, is, is also part of many of the accusations of you know of group sex that these girls were made to have with him and her and him and many you know him and other ones of his co-conspirators uh, Sarah Kellen Nadia Marsakova who have since changed their names and I'm going to expose who they are today uh, living here in New York State and and the you know lavishing in the the high life off of the Epstein family still uh, that's how you know, that you get when you're loyal to the Epstein family and you keep your mouth shut. And you get uh, the honor of continuing to work for them after the shit hits the fan. Pardon my French. I'm just looking because now I see we're starting to get to like um. I get to the massage one. Sorry, guys. I should I should know what page it's on, but it. The reason I don't is because I actually have it as a PDS, so I just know it's going to change here anytime where it goes to a different country, and that's when it's going to be. Sex. Oops. See, another name. Guess whose name that is circled? Mr. Peter Soros. Yes. He is the brother of George. Famous, infamous Democratic operative George Soros. Here's some Trumps in here. I believe there's Ivanka, Ivana, Blaine and Robert, but not Donald. I'll tell you why. Because at this point in time, Jeffrey Epstein and Donald Trump had had a falling out over one of the girls that had been procured. Jeffrey had procured from Mar-a-Lago by from one of the um members and i'm sure obviously they ripped trump a new one over it and so him and jeffrey had a falling out over it. trump later made a statement saying that he was a, a really fine guy and that they he liked beautiful women just as trump does he says and i and i believe jeffrey likes some young and that was a kind of dig that that, you know, because he knew he liked him young because he had already caught him in a, this, this ploy to get one of his uh, members' daughters. Casey Wasserman and Laura Wasserman. Uh, those are some pretty big names to have. If you, are, you know, the Wassermans are definitely a family that you want to have if you want to avoid legal trouble here in the United States. And the thing is, is, is the, the the butler didn't know who to trust in, in law enforcement. So, therefore, you know, no, they didn't, he tried to sell this because he thought that the person he sold it to would you know, turn it in. And then he didn't have to worry about the repercussions if, you know, Epstein could send somebody after him. So, anyway, Ghislaine Maxwell, she is the one I was just telling you about. You know, she's part of the Maxwell family here. He's all the names and numbers that she can be found at. Her, Sarah Kellen, and another one, Nadia Marzakova, those are Jeffrey's girls that he sends out on the street, in malls, in uh, places where, you know, the, the girls that we just talked in the beginning, girls who come from um, bad, you know, bad backgrounds, homes that are, you know, um, broken mothers that are doing drugs. Um, they're, they were trained how to spot that and sent out to literally procure these girls. And they use those girls to procure more girls, like a pyramid sex scheme. That's, this is re that's been actually what this 
case is, was called from the beginning, a pyramid sex scheme. All right, so now you've got some of the places I was talking about. Okay, so now he, this is how he's got America, right? You got all these little places, place four seasons, Christie's, okay, Delmonico's, exercise, shoe repair, you know, uh, Pen Pencil Hotel. You see, you're getting it right. And you notice how it, some of it says entertainment, some of it says finance. And there's another state or another country, whatever. We're going to get to the massages soon. There's France. Okay. Here's his French apartment. Jeffrey Epstein. Here's all of that. Look, you can see all of it. Uh, he's got banks, colonial banks. Uh, the heads of those banks, um, access for AT and T. Uh, I mean, this is no joke. This guy had it. Here you go. Here's one. Here's a massage in Paris. He wants to get himself a massage by an underage in Paris. There's a oh, Debbie, Paris, Marie, Rosemary, Alexandria, Carolina, Caroline, Deborah, Sibella, Stefana. Better than gypsy, it says. Bation foot massage. Deborah. Uh, this one just says contact. Corinne. She knows Thai massage. Karine. I have no idea what's blacked out there. Um, but that's just in Paris, guys. Okay. Then he's got maid service, whatever. And if you keep going, here's more massage. In Paris. Irene, Deborah, Magdali, Francois, Donna, Donna, Alina, Nadia, Deborah, Nadia, Sonia, Tanya speaks little English. Tanya speaks no English. Nadia says use this number as of April of 2003. Um, you, there's some of them on here that are like uh, lives with mom, so he knows not to like blow it when he calls for them and say, oh, I'm looking to get a massage by your daughter. <laughs> yeah, that wouldn't have gone over well, right, Jeffrey? Here we go, massage on the island. So if you want a, someone that you can take to the island with you or you want someone who's already set up to be massaging you on the island, Grapevine Salon, Lynn and Karen, Lynn and Karen Gray, uh, Muffy, Zeno, uh, one's H and Zeno, P, uh, Kevin, ooh, Gretchen Rhodes, Gretchen Rhodes, Gretchen Cell. This is also circled. Remember that, okay? This right here, he circled and wrote, this is where he keeps the apartment for models on the 66th Street, 301 East 66th Street. That's where he was keeping girls. And this is the rest of the uh, information on that yeah, the one he had now more more sir eva anderson and ehud barak are both circled i i can't say i know why i haven't even had time to to try to invest anything into them of guys just the few that popped out to me were jean-luc picard of course peter soros so uh, there's a couple other ones right here D dirtbag dershowitz uh portables Oh, these are all his jets, Gulfstream phones. They're phones for his jets, okay. Uh, Dershowitz is his favorite dirtbag lawyer that is also accused in many of the, the lawsuits of having sex with the underage girls. Um, let's see, keep going. I wanted to show you some more massage ones, but they're hard. you got to find them. They're mixed in here. He had it kept, like, you know, right in the middle of places so that it didn't jump out. Robin Leach. Oh, we all know Robin Leach. You ever remember that? Uh, what was it? Uh, Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. Yeah, Robin Leach. Yeah, this man has, when I tell you he's got the connections, he's got the connections. We're talking a thousand or so girls that he was able to molest underage, pay $200, and literally do less time than someone who got their third DWI. Okay? Yeah. If you think about it that way, yeah. That's David Rockefeller. Whenever you see a Rockefeller, you know that so they know somebody powerful. 
whenever you got that kind of that kind of pull, you are pretty much untouchable. Now, if you start noticing things like Krista's friend, meaning like you want to get a hold of Krista, you get a hold of Krista's friend, Caroline. You know what I mean? Um, you just gotta read through them all real carefully, and then there's Donald. See, Trump Donald was in a different place. I didn't think he was in this book. His other family was. Let's see. This may it may have been just had having it from old times because, like I said, they were friends until that. Uh, this might show you how much pull this man has. There's the main line for the White House. In case he needed to give them a shout. Some more circled names, Tom and Pat Sawyers, Lynn and Jojo Fontanilla. Um, these are some more of Jeffrey's uh, uh, apartments and uh, connect, you know, his, his garage, staff, phones, who's staff, whatever part of staff they are, extra lines here. In the, uh, this is the flower guy, I guess. Um there's arrows to these P's. I'm not sure what that means. And so that's why there's all these P's and H's. See what I mean? Like, what is that? Lynn and JoJo, we, Richie, uh, who are, what are these letters after? Where some of them might obviously would know what they stand for. Home, work, you know, cell phone, whatever. But what does the B stand for? What is the you know, uh, uh, the P stand for, what does O stand for? Uh, there's a code that this man has, and I don't know if the the butler ever broke that code or not. Here we go. Here's some more massages, guys. And here, if he's in the UK, he can stop by and get a massage by Liz, Liz, Annabelle, Barry, Barry. I wonder if that's Barack Obama. <laughs> anyway. Jo Jonine, Joanne, damn, there's a lot of numbers for Barry in here. Maxine, Maxine, Lisa, Bernice, Helen, who's an osteopath, Felicity, who does Thai massage, Felicity with the P next to it, that I'm not sure what that means. Unlisted London, Sherry, Ellen, good, good, Ellen, good, unlisted. Um. All right, so you guys get the hint. This is online. If you ever want to look, take a look at it and, and do a little of your own research, you find treasures. You, you start picking out names that have just the circles, names that have the circles and the arrows, names that have the circles, the arrows, and stuff written next to it. And if you start breaking it down, I think you might just, somebody, somebody might just figure out this code. And, uh, one of these days, I might spend some time doing it if nobody else does. Anyway, I want to go back to where we were at, which was the illegal, um, the uh, you know, the basically the the whole sentencing has been done. He's released five months early. Lawsuits are being settled, and uh, basically the the butler dies in jail. So fast forward, okay. Uh, in April of 2010, there were flight logs that were um, found as part of one of the lawsuits. And on those flight logs obtained as part of those civil suits show an assortment of politicians, academics, celebrities, heads of state, world leaders, all flying on Epstein's private jet in the early 2000s, among them Bill Clinton, former NSA advisor Sandy Berger, former Colombian president Andre Pastrana and his and lawyer Alan Dershowitz. Uh, Clinton, Bill Clinton took repeated trips onto the Lolita Express, the private passenger jet owned by billionaire Jeffrey Epstein, with an actress in softcore porn movies 
who appears in Epstein's address book under an entry for massages. According to the flight logs obtained by Gawker and published for the first time today, the logs also show that Clinton shared more than a dozen flights with a woman who federal prosecutors believe procured underage girls to sexually service Epstein and his friends and act as potential co-conspirator to his crimes. All right. Epstein pleaded guilty in 2008 to in Florida to one count of soliciting underage girls for sex and one count of adult solicitation for which he served out over over a year just over a year in county jail but sprawling but sprawling local state and federal investigations into this eccentric investor's habit of paying teens for massage sessions during which he would allegedly penetrate girls with sex toys, demand to be masturbated, and have intercourse, turned up a massive network of victims, including 35 female minors whom federal prosecutors believe he'd sexually abused. He has reportedly settled lawsuits for more than 30 Jane Doe victims since 2008, and the youngest alleged victim, 12 at the time of her abuse. Okay, so Epstein, um, I'm not going to go through all this. I'm going to skim. Um, Virginia Roberts is definitely one of the more famous Epstein victims. She was probably one of the first to come out. She's the one that I told you has the lawsuit that involves Prince Andrew. Prince Andrew, yes. And in that lawsuit, um, it oh, in the just before we go to that, I want you guys to see this. It says right here that... Um, Two female associates, the socialite Jislyn Maxwell and former sister Sarah Kellen, have been repeatedly accused in court filing as acting as acting as pimps for him, recruiting and grooming young girls into the network of child sex workers and frequently participating in sex acts with them. Kellen, in particular, was believed by detectives to by Palm Beach Police Department. Hang on. Kellen, in particular, was believed by detectives, which was the first to start unraveling the operation, to be so deeply involved in the enterprise, they prepared for a warrant for her arrest as an accessory to molestation and sex with minors. In the end, she was never arrested, charged, and federal prosecutors granted her immunity in 2007 in the non-prosecution agreement that described her as a potential co-conspirator and the reason they did this was to cover the ass of every person that rode on that lolita express and so all of those powerful celebrities and politicians and uh academics uh definitely had to hit up every one of their uh hookups in the government and in in the department of justice in order to push this deal through because this deal is what stopped them from stopped the federal government from going any further in in the investigation and exposing of who what these you know famous famous people were doing on this island with a guy who's well known for procuring minors for sex um, sorry, Mayor. Anyway, uh, I want to just say that the the non the co-conspirators it says this. United States also agrees it will not institute any criminal charges against potential co-conspirators of Epstein, included but not limited to Sarah Kellen, Adriana Ross, Leslie Groff, or Nadia Marcinkova. Now, that not limited to basically leaves it open for the laundry list of people that really it was meant to cover, okay? Um, the Clinton stuff and the Doug Band stuff, I most people by now have probably seen all that. Uh, uh, Kellen was on a plane with Clinton and Epstein and Maxwell on at least 11 flights. You know, that's really the big thing. Um and I believe, believe it or not, Hillary Clinton was even on this plane six times. Um, but when Bill got on, he dipped his uh, he he dipped his Secret Service to get on. Here we go. This is what I wanted to show you. The, all right, 
the ones from that trip. Here we go. All right. A week long anti. Yep. Clinton recruited Epstein to make his plane available for a week long anti poverty, anti AIDS tour of Africa with Kevin Spacey, Chris Tucker, and billionaire creep Ron Burkle. Clinton, Clinton confident Gail Smith, who now serves as Barack Obama's National Security Council, and others. The logs from that trip show Maxwell Kellen and a woman named Shante Davies joined the entourage for five days. That last name, Shante Davies, shows up elsewhere in the papers unearthed by the various investigations into Epstein's sex ring. His little black book, Davies, is one of the 27 women listed under the entry, Massage, California. One of the six lists of the massage girls Epstein kept in various locales with a total of 160 names around the globe, many of them underage victims. Okay. Other prominent figures whose name appear in the logs, which document globe spanning flights on Epstein's planes during the period of 1997 to 2005 include Dershowitz, former sec Treasury Secretary and Harvard President Larry Summers, Naomi Campbell, and scientist Steven Pinker. The log also cast doubt on public statements made by Dershowitz, who has been vigorously downplaying his relationship with Epstein since Roberts levied her accusations against him. Dershowitz has attempted to paint himself as a mere passing acquaintance of Epstein, suggesting the American lawyer last week that he only began hanging around the billionaire to fundraise for his school, Harvard. Says, from what I've read, your relationship with Epstein seemed chummy. You socialized with him. You knew your family. You stayed at his various homes. Isn't it a bad idea for a lawyer to be so close to a notorious client? And so let me tell you how I met him. I was introduced to him by Lady de Rothschild, an academic colleague. Yeah, she's an academic colleague, all right. Look her up and see if that's how you would describe her. He was friendly with Larry Summers, who was he was in the process of contributing $50 million to Harvard for evolutionary biology. Epstein pledged a substantial donation to Harvard's program for evolutionary dynamics, though it was $30 million, not $50 million. The first installment was announced in 2003, and Epstein indeed, who was indeed friendly with Summers, who assumed the mantle of president in Harvard in 2001. The clear implication of Dershowitz's answer is that he didn't start hanging out with Epstein until it was in his interest to because Epstein was the boss's friend and donating money. So, but the one thing, oh, this is what I wanted to show you. Have we all heard that thing that Dershowitz says about his wife? I've been married to the same woman for 28 years. She goes with me everywhere. People know this. I won't argue a case or give a speech unless my wife is with me. This is not the profile of someone who screws around. Um, so, it shows Dershowitz was close enough to have accompanied him on a flight from Palm Beach to New Jersey as early. Or, sorry, sorry, 1997. On that flight, the pair, accompanied by a number of people, including one identified female, a Hazel, a Claire, and Maxwell. The log showed Dershowitz on a flight from Bedford to Teterboro in 98, and on a flight from Teterboro to Martha Finier in 99, and on a 2005 trip from Massachusetts to Montreal shows him traveling with Epstein, Tatiana, and others. The one thing the logs don't show Dershowitz's wife traveling with him. As for who else was on the flights, Dershowitz couldn't recall. Hazel, I don't know. Claire, I have no idea. Tatiana, I think that was a woman in her 20s who was Epstein's girlfriend, but I never flew with her. The unidentified female, well, that could have been my mother. Really, Epstein? Really? All right. Oh, wait a minute. I want to get rid of that. Yeah. Translate. Okay. So let's talk about what's going on now. I'm going to start moving here. Let's talk about what's going on uh, today. February of uh, this year, February 2019, the, the plea deal on the Jeffrey Epstein sex trafficking case was finally found by a judge, district judge, uh, what, no name, no name, 
Kenneth Mara. Right? Epstein's employees to find and bring minor girls to him, wrote U.S. Judge Kenneth Mara of Palm Beach. Epstein worked in concert with others to obtain minors not only for his own sexual gratification, but for grat sexual gratification of others. Epstein, now 66, reached a non-prosecution. We all know. I just read all this to you. But it says Acosta, now President Trump's secretary, secretary, has defended the deal as appropriate, but not commented since the round of stories, recent round of stories. He was asked about the case during his Senate confirmation hearing. And at the end of the day, he said, based on the evidence, professionals within the prosecutor's office decided that a plea guarantees someone goes to jail. That guarantees he must register generally and guarantee other outcomes. It's a good thing. Oh, please. Early February, the Justice Department opened an investigation into the federal prosecutor's handling of the plea deal. The department's uh, Office of Professional Man it's, it's OPM, not OPR, uh, OP, Office of Professional Management, wrote in a letter to Senator Ben Sass that would examine whether professional misconduct occurred in the highly publicized case of Epstein. Um, Sass the, a member of the Senate Judiciary Committee has twice asked the Justice Department to investigate the case. Welcome the news. Jeffrey Epstein is a child rapist and there's not a single mom or dad in America who shouldn't be horrified at the fact that he received a pathetically soft sentence. The victims of Epstein's child sex trafficking ring deserve this investigation. And so do the American people and the members of law enforcement who work to put these kinds of monsters behind bars. That's right. Oops, come on. We go, I want to go off. Right, that was it. Oh, no, I want to go back. Hang on. Here we go. And this one. Oop, this one. Go. And this one. Now, here, here's where I want to be. Same guy. So, I want to talk about something. I'm not real big on the Democrats, guys. I, I used to be a lifelong Democrat, voted Democrat all the way up until 2016. And oh, I got 13 minutes left. I'm going to have to do a part two, guys. I'm going to cut this off in just a minute so it doesn't cut off on me. And my part two will be about 15 minutes long. Um, Jeffrey Epstein, prosecutor, Alex Acosta is grilled over over the at a budget hearing. Anyway, as I was telling you, I'm not big on Democrats. But when I saw this Democrat senator, um, it, and this was just at a budget hearing, guys. This was like nobody was expecting this. It was just simple hearing, okay? Uh, he says that he faced congressional scrutiny, so on and so forth. I gotta hop down. Come on, keep going. What's going on here? This freaking thing, this ad that's in the way, it's all over the place. Come on. There you go. That's her. Oh, she took her away. So, um, anyway, like I said, I haven't seen anything that Democrats have said since the minute Trump's entered office that I thought was even worth a lick. However, when I was coming across this budget information, I about tripped over my own self and passed out. Okay. Let's get to it. Catherine Clark, right here, Democrat U.S. Representative from Massachusetts. Um, Acosta, while well, U.S. Attorney for Southern District of Florida, I, you already know um, he helped basically get Epstein a deal of a lifetime. So anyway, the judge found you broke the law, Miss. This is what she said to him when it came to her turn. Okay, the judge found you broke the law, Mr. Acosta, when you chose not to tell the victims about this deal. You gave them the impression the investigation was still ongoing. Was the judge right? Acosta attempted to pivot, but Clark continued. I have. I asked you a yes or no question, and then Rep. Lois Frankel, a Democrat who constituents in Palm Beach, quizzed Acosta about how it was that the sex abuser got off so early. Many people in my community are upset that you allowed a sexual predator on the loose. She's among a group of lawmakers who have asked Acosta to resign. The Department of Justice is investigating the case. Um, so anyway, I, the reason I, she says something in here like, um, like. Oh, where is it? I want to go back up. I think it was up here. Oh, here we go. Democratic program cuts. 
because he's cutting like 70% to the um, human trafficking program, you guys. And she's like, how should we trust you to cut these programs when you just gave a deal to this month right here? Democratic lawmakers were concerned about the number of program cuts, a significant de decrease in program programs that c combat human trafficking. When Trump's presidency is supposed to be the human trafficking, you know, anti-human trafficking presidency, like that's what his thing has been, taking down human trafficking. Uh, under, I mean, if you watch the internet, you would know, but not if you watch the news. Okay, that opened the door for several of them to question. That's what she was saying. Basically, like, you know, this is not the first time you've ignored human trafficking. Because of that, they were able to talk about this. And I just thought that was great. And it says, Acosta has never, kept, never said why the deal was kept under wraps. At the hearing Wednesday, he told lawmakers what he's repeatedly said for years. The deal ensured he went to jail and had to register as a sex offender. So Rep. Jamie Herrera said, let me just understand the frustration, say I understand the frustration, but if the state prosecuted him, he was going to get off entirely. That's what he says. If it, it, it was the work of our office that resulted in him going to jail. It was the work of our office that made it so the world was put on notice he was a sex offender. One person involved in the case who didn't get noticed was Rick Bradshaw, who ran the jail. In his first comments, Bradshaw, in the wide-ranging interview, said Epstein met the criteria for a liberal work release program, which meant he spent very little time in jail. He was allowed to leave the country or the county six days a week, have his private driver take him to his office, spent up to 12 hours a day. All we did was house him, Bradshaw told Hernandez, host of the Sundial program. He met the criteria. He just he was not adjudicated as a violent sex offender. He wasn't even adjudicated as a sex offender, which he was supposed to be, remember? So, anyway, take it bit from there. I've just showed you that the deal was in February found to be, the judge found it to be um, illegal. Now, the one thing that kind of bummed us out is the Virginia Roberts. We were, we were all hanging on this. And I'm going to stop it here and go to a part two. But I want you to I want to talk to you because Virginia Roberts um, lawsuit was going for discovery. And it was going it would it was this was a 10 year lawsuit. And as many times as the other court dates had come up, we had never come so close to picking the jury. And we got all the way to the point where the jurors were being had been picked before settlements were made. So where are we now? Come see me and I'll have part two in about 15 minutes. Thank you for hanging out. Um, Kate420, you can catch me. Um, my channel is kind of working on getting back up. You, uh, but I'm going to be out with, I'm going to try to start coming out with at least two new videos every day until I can get things back up where I had it before. Um, and hopefully that would mean a live at least once a night because I miss my up all nighters. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out and uh, look forward for part two because there's a whole lot that, that I've got from these lawsuits that you definitely want to hear.